First of all, thank you for joining me today for this talk about CliffX Pro. We have a lot of ground to cover here, so we're going to hold off until the end of the talk for Q&A. If questions come up during the course of the talk, though, please feel free to post them in the chat, and I'll do my best to get to them. So some quick information about me. My name is Sam Hurley. You may know me better as Stray from Native Control, and I've been developing control solutions for Ableton Live for a little over 10 years now. And over that course of time, aside from developing a product catalog, I've also had the opportunity to work with live users around the world on custom solutions, as well as hardware manufacturers such as Livid Instruments and software developers such as Ableton. And most recently, we teamed up with Isotonic Studios, who are handling the distribution and promotion of CliffX Pro, which we'll be talking about today. Now, I assume that at least some of you are familiar with CliffX Pro already, but for the benefit of those that aren't, we're going to kind of go through, uh, in this first part of the talk, uh, just the basics of CliffX Pro so that we can all be on the same page here. CliffX Pro is a deceptively simple scripting language for Ableton Live. I say deceptively simple because you'll be using simple words and phrases, but the results you can accomplish with those simple tools can be quite complex in the end. I want to stress, though, that CliffX Pro does not involve any programming. All right, this is designed for the average live user. Now, you might say, well, what is a scripting language and why would I want one? I guess the easiest way to answer that is that CliffX Pro adds a new dimension to live. It allows you to control live and approach live in ways that you normally couldn't. Okay, so it can, it can kind of drastically change the way you use live. And for that reason, many people have found it to be indispensable, and hopefully you will too. All right, so to understand ClipX Pro, there's basically three concepts that we need to be aware of. First, we have actions. ClipX Pro has a large number of actions that control various aspects of live, ranging from the simple to the complex. At the most basic level, though, actions produce some sort of a change in live and are associated with a simple word or phrase. Let's take a look at some examples. This action, BPM 100, will set the tempo to 100. This action, Load Dev Auto Filter, will load Auto Filter onto the selected track. Next, we have action lists, and these consist of one or more actions that will be performed at the same time. Let's look at some examples. Here's an action list with just a single action, and this will set the tempo to 120. Here's an action list with multiple actions, each is separated by a semicolon, and this will set the tempo to 140, global quantization to two bars, and the time signature to 3, 4. All right, so that's the default sort of action list. It'll perform all of its actions at nearly the same time. They actually happen in order, but they happen so quickly that it appears they all happen at the same time. There's another type of action list we can use called the P sequence, uh, or play sequence, and that will step to the action list and trigger the actions one at a time. So in this case, we'll set the tempo to 80, 100, 120, 140, and then back to 80 again. We have another variant of that called RP sequence for random play sequence, and that will randomly step to the list. In this case, there's only four choices, so there won't be too much randomization going on here. And lastly, we have X triggers. These are events that occur in live that can trigger action lists, and there are several types of X triggers. So first we have X clips, and that's any clip in session view that starts with an identifier. All right, an identifier is any word or phrase enclosed in square brackets. And there's a few different types of X clips. First, we have the default, and that'll trigger its action list as soon as the clip starts playing. So in this case, it's going to uh, set the color of, this, of scene two. All right. Now, one of the benefits of X clips is that just like any other clip, they could be quantized. So to show you that, I'll set global quantization to two bars here. And now this action will be quantized to two bars. All right, let me turn quantization back off. Now the next type is the default with stop, and this can actually trigger two action lists. Uh, one when the clip starts playing, and another when the clip stops playing. So in this case, uh, it's gonna turn punch in on when it starts, and then turn punch in off when it stops. So punch in on, and then I stop the clip, and punch in is off. All right, the next type is a sequence type. And this is similar to the play sequence that we saw before, but it'll step to the action list each time the X clip loops. So in this case, it'll be change in record quantization values. And we can see that down here in the status bar. All right, and we also have a random variety of that, um, and that works just like the random P sequence. So it'll randomly step to the sequence. Next, we have X scenes, which is any scene in session view that starts with an identifier. So I'll turn this scene here into an X scene, and it'll add an audio track to the set. And X scenes will perform their action list as soon as the scene is triggered. Next, we have X cues, which is any locator in arrangement view that starts with an identifier. 
And these will perform their action list when the playhead crosses over the locator. So I have an example here, and this will show a message in live status bar here. And lastly, we have X controls. These are controls on a MIDI controller that you define in a settings file. Here I've just defined two buttons, all right? And X controls will perform their action list when the control sends an on message. They can optionally perform a second action list when the control sends an off message. In this case though, I'm just gonna demonstrate the on message. So we'll switch back over here to live and I have a little application that simulates a MIDI controller here. So this button will switch between session and arrangement view and this will show and hide the browser. All right, and one last thing on the subject of triggering action lists. Although it's not considered an X trigger because it's not actually part of CliffX Pro, you can trigger action lists for Macs for live devices. And we provide this example device that shows how that works. Let me just open this device so you can see what's inside of it. It's very simple. Uh, the operative part is here, this JS object, which you can use in your own devices. And you simply pass this the action list that you want to perform. All right. In this demonstration device, we have a text area here and a trigger button, and this trigger button will trigger whatever actions are in this text area. So right now it'll toggle the metronome. And, you know, I, I could add additional stuff like, uh, let's say, uh, BPM randomize, which will randomize the tempo, and that will trigger both those actions. So just another way of triggering action lists, and we'll see this in use in one of the scenarios later on in this talk. So those are the basics that you need to be aware of in order to follow along with the rest of this talk, where we'll look at different scenarios and how we might approach them with CliffX Pro. Now, before we get to that, though, there's one other subject I want to cover, and that is how I would suggest learning CliffX Pro. Some people get intimidated by CliffX Pro because it can do so much, and they try to absorb it in a small amount of time. That's not really a good idea, in my opinion. I think you should kind of take it one step at a time, integrate just a couple couple actions at a time and uh, get comfortable with those, then integrate more rather than trying to sit there and learn about everything that ClipX Pro can do. And in terms of getting ideas on what sort of actions you might want to use, uh, we have live lessons that ship with ClipX Pro. I do a Q&A video every Monday on YouTube and uh, our forum is very active. So those are some areas where you can get ideas on what actions might be interesting to you. All right. And I think if you take it slowly in that way, it's a lot less intimidating. Okay, so that said, uh, let's get to the more interesting part of this video where we look at those scenarios that I mentioned.